Yeah, so 2018 was a very difficult year. Um, what we saw was that equity markets and bond markets both suffered quite a substantial drawdown in Q4. Um, so we were very pleased we've delivered a flat return in 2018. Um, and the key drivers of that return actually, as per usual in our, in our portfolio in the Latitude Horizon Fund, were the single stocks. So it was really the single stocks that were performing well and generating compounding returns for their clients and not derating as much as the market. So names like Starbucks, Visa, Shiseido and Advance Auto all really helped the portfolio last year. Some of the key themes that we've got in the portfolio that really run through as a sort of thread through some of our stocks, one of the ones that we've really been paying attention to in the last year has been our China exposure. We have China exposure through developed market equities, so things like Starbucks, Shiseido and Unilever, which all have large percentages of sales and profits from China. That's been a real theme for us as people have become a little bit more nervous about China, but we continue to really like the long-term prospects. We've also looked a lot at consumer experiences ahead of consumer goods companies, so people preferring to buy experiences, so things again like Starbucks. Um, and one of the other themes which is quite tangential is the US banking system. Post-regulation, post-financial crisis, um, we believe that financial system there is far, far more resilient than it has been in the past. And we've got two banks there, Bank of America and Goldman Sachs. I wish I knew. Um, one thing I do think about the cycle at the moment is that 10 years post the crisis, um, we've had a really, really strong bull market in both equities and, and most government bonds around the world too. And in both asset classes, I expect from here that we're going to see quite low returns and probably quite high volatility. So it's not the time to be reaching for risk. It's the time to be hunkering down within your portfolios. You know, my belief is that actually strong businesses which have strong compounding power at this stage in the cycle are the best bet for your portfolio. Concentrate in a small number of ideas which are defensively positioned. And no matter what the cycle shows, over the next few years, it is likely to soften. And at that point, you can look to add more risk to your portfolios and be a bit more opportunistic for the long term. I really do think that people should be defensively positioned at the moment, but that said, you know, timing markets is genuinely always a fool's errand. Uh, we believe you should look at what sort of risk you should be running. Uh, if you've got lots of savings, you can take a higher level of risk. Um, if you're in retirement, potentially you should be taking a lower level of risk. Stick with that equity allocation and just focus on buying the best businesses and the best fund managers that you can who will ride through cycle for you, not trying to buy managers who will time the cycle. Currency hedging is something that we do from time to time within the portfolio when we see a really large potential risk for our clients. Um, Brexit is one of those scenarios where we could see a sharp move either way, up or down in a, a successful or a no deal scenario. We don't really know which way it's going to come off, so what we've done is reduce that risk to our shareholders. So by taking an FX hedge, something that's not available to retail uh, investors directly, we've reduced the exposure to the decision making process and the portfolio will just carry on through regardless and hopefully over the years continue to compound for our clients. So we have a few UK stocks and I actually do anticipate that all of them will do well post Brexit. I think the whole UK market is trading on a suppressed valuation just around the huge level of uncertainty in the Brexit situation. Um, but that said, probably the standout name within our portfolio and the one most likely to have a short term reaction is Tesco's. Tesco's trades on 12 times earnings. It's the market leader in a reasonably concentrated market. Uh, it's actually globally the largest online supermarket uh, for, for groceries. Um, and it's very well positioned with a great management team and a great strategy to combat that omni-channel sort of presence, do some click and collect, incorporate their book a deal. I think there's just lots of optionality and a great margin structure coming through for the next three to five years. And I think that will be recognized post-Brexit.